Thank you for tuning in to This Automation Life, brought to you by Brenner Fiedler. I'm your host, Jeremy Schubert. Each week, we discuss technologies used in automation. This week, Paul Oppenheim, automation and controls specialist with Brenner Fiedler, is here to discuss SPST, SPDTDPDT. Thanks for joining us today, Paul. No problem. Gosh, uh, lots of uh, letters there. Um, a lot of letters. What is that? What am I even talking about there? What, what on earth are you, are you talking in code? What just happened there? Okay, so uh, what uh, Jeremy, our host, is referring to is uh, different types of relays uh, that are either it's like a general purpose uh, mechanical uh, relay or uh, switches. And when we're talking about like SPST, those letters actually mean something. It's the term is called single pull, single throw. If you hear a DPDT, that means double pull, double throw. DPST, you're thinking double pull, single throw. So we'll okay. start. That's what those letters mean. Now, well, that's a little uh, less foggy. So yeah, we, I think you're heading into what are that? What does that what mean? Does any of that stuff mean? Okay. Yeah. So, so let's start with like the the most simplest switch uh, we can think of, be it other a, 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 a general purpose relay that we talked about previous, or we can just talk about a switch itself, just like a typical on off toggle switch. That yeah, let's say have. a light switch you find that, in your house. So okay, so a typical light switch is what you normally refer to as an SPST or single pull, single throw. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Well, we all kind of know what single means. It means one. Okay. The pull that we're referring to is the common connection. Uh, that which um, the, the power from your main power supply, in this case, probably a wall outlet or whatever the case is, is tied to. Um, you can almost think of it as in, inside that pole, there is an armature that's uh, mechanically linked uh, to a moving contact or it pivots on that pole. Okay. And that's going to make or break a connection with a fixed contact on the other side. Uh, now, when we refer to, so that takes care of the pole part. Now, when we talk about a throw, um, you might have actually heard, heard of the term throwing a switch. Uh, what that means is, albeit turning it on or off, or off to on, means changing the state. So okay. we're saying single pull, single throw. That means we have a one switch that we're throwing, and that's going to make or break one single connection. And that's okay. it. So, so we've got one, one connection as a kind of our pull, as opposed to maybe having three connections in a three pole or maybe like a three phase type of setup. Yeah, or, or yeah, for three poles. So, or, or let, even, we'll talk about double poles in, in a moment. Okay. So we'll say here we have um, the pole side, we'll say, uh, our, which is our common. Okay, then you have the other side, which is our fixed contact, which would be what we call like maybe perhaps a normally open contact. Normally open meaning that my circuit is normally in an open or broken state in which no electricity is flowing through my circuit. So if we're talking about a light switch, you guessed it, our light is off. Okay. Uh, I now throw the switch, meaning in this case changing the state from off to on. What does that mean? I'm now making my connection, uh, and now electricity is now flowing through that circuit, and the light is on. So I'm either making or breaking with okay. that single pole, single throw switch. And so we can only throw it to the pole or away from the pole. It's exactly. Either connected, connecting the pole or not connecting the pole. Correct. Okay. Now um, we have uh, other options where you can go with what's called a single pole double throw, and this gets uh, a little more interesting because now what we're working with is again we have one single pole. There's one single common, but now we have two fixed contacts that it can now toggle between. So you have like a common, which was your pole, but then you also have a normally open contact and a normally closed contact. Okay. Um, the analogy I like to use for this, uh, which maybe we can relate to, if you've ever ridden on a train before, is a, a railroad switch, uh, where let's say you envision a track that's you know, traveling north, let's say, and then you come to a fork in the road, so to speak, and now you have the choice. You can either go northwest or northeast. Now, the train can't actually turn left or right. It only moves or doesn't move, just like electricity flowing. It's yeah. up to the railroad switch to determine which way that train's going to go, just like it's up to your double pole or single pole double throw switch to decide, do I wish to have my electricity flow through this circuit A or circuit B? And so you still have the same, let's say, power supply, or the same, you know, let's say, again, it's your wall outlet or whatever the case is, but now we can drive two different loads. Uh, an example of this might be um, perhaps I want to have energy flowing to a motor that's running on my one circuit. And then when I flip the switch uh, from, let's say, changing the state, 
I now wish to now disconnect that motor because I'm, I'm killing that circuit. But now I'm going from circuit A, which was controlling the motor, now circuit B. And maybe that turns on some sort of a uh, green light that will say, you are now safe to work on your machine or something like that because the motor is now in a stopped state. Okay. And, uh, and then if I was to flip the switch back, obviously the green light would turn off because I'm no longer running that circuit. I'm going back to my original circuit. Now the motor's running again. That's just one example. Okay, so you know, picturing the train track, and when you throw that train switch, it either diverts the train one way or the other way. Exactly. So you're, you're connecting it to one, connecting one side to either point A or point B. That's exactly Left. right. And so you okay. can think like that as your analogy. Uh, so now think of that now in terms of electricity, instead of your locomotive or whatever, you have electricity flowing. It's either going to flow through one circuit or the other circuit, and that's single pole double throw switch is what determines that okay all right okay. so far making okay. sense yep now we have other circuits as well they just kind of build from here so now we can get into what's known as a um a double pole single throw okay now in this case you can think of it as the original single pole single throw we're talking about but now you just envision two of them they are completely independent of each other so again you just open or close a switch but you're having one single throw of that. So if if this was again, okay. you, if you're think of like a um, not so much like a, a light switch, but if you had a switch where although I'm physically flipping one knob or whatever the case is on my device, I'm actually controlling or turning on and off two switches, even though I'm only throwing one switch from my perspective. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, They're you could turn on two separate circuits, but with one action, whether that action is a mechanical lever or electromagnetic uh, coil or something. Exactly. So this would be a situation where um, you wish to run two different um, uh, loads, let's say, that perhaps run on com two completely different voltages. Maybe I have, I want a motor that runs on 110 volts and I have a light that runs off of 9 volts DC. But I want to be able to throw a switch that will move them both at the same time. I don't want to have to throw a switch to turn on the motor and then have to throw on another switch to turn on the light. Yeah. God, it would be nice if I could just throw one switch and have them both turn on. Sounds That's nice. Like, right. That's exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> that would be an example of reusing a double pole single throw. Okay. Gotcha. And then again, they just start building from there. Then we have what's called the double pole double throw. Uh, again, just like what we talked about before with the uh, the train track, but now imagine you have two of them, if there was possible to do this side by side, where uh, you can now divert two independent trains, you know, northwest or two independent trains northeast, so to speak. Okay. And, and again, two different circuits, right? So some in some interesting circuits that some applications, I guess. I think I've seen um, some things you've worked on where. Uh, motors are often where they'll they'll operate on either 120 volts or 240 volts, just depending right. on how you wire them. And you've yes. been able to do that with a relay or a combination of relays before. That is that correct. Works? Yeah, exactly. So let's say uh, I've even come across motors that are uh, exactly they're either 110 or 220 volts AC. And again, the motor itself. Um, if you didn't use a switch, you'd have to actually use jumper wires or you know kind of rearrange the wiring inside the motor itself. Uh, whether you want it to be, you know, a one running on 110 or 220, uh, but now if we were to use a uh, double pull, double throw switch, we can get kind of clever with that and just say, hey, if I have the switch in what we'll call the up position, I know it runs on 110. If I have it in the down position, it runs on 220. Gee, it's a lot easier to flip a switch than to have to rip apart the motor and do a bunch of rewiring, which might take 15 yeah. minutes to do, right? Oh yeah, so. definitely. And, and if that's a, a double to, a double pull, double throw, or that depends on the motor and how it's wired? It depends on the motor. You might okay. even work with a, a, a triple pull. I mean, they, these things can go on and on. Okay. Uh, this, so I'm just, we're just kind of probably just kind of keep it around this, the singles and the doubles. But, yes, there's like quad pull, double throws. Um, there, There's all sorts of uh, crazy type of uh, configurations you have now. So. Okay. Wow. Uh, that's, that's a lot of good information about a subject that, you know, from the outside, it seems simple or it seems really confusing, depending on if you know it or not. So I think that's that should be really helpful. Excellent. Uh, well, thanks, Paul. Thanks a lot for sure. coming. And um, thanks to everybody listening for joining. And uh, we'll stay tuned to Brenner Fiedler's This Automation Life. If there are questions on the topic you just heard or if you have a topic you'd like to hear discussed, please email us at tech, that's T-E-C-H, at B-R-F-A dot com. 
and be sure to continue tuning in each week we're working on some communication episodes coming up we're going to talk about some nitrogen generators and uh, more all right thanks